Building Bridges of Understanding, Making Jewish History Their History, Creating Bonds of Respect and Tolerance, Restoring a Jewish Presence. This is what the School of Dialogue, an educational program of the Forum for Dialogue Among Nations, has been achieving among more than 60 high and middle schools in cities, towns, and villages all over Poland. I've been amazed at how penetrating this program has been at broadening young Poles' knowledge about the long presence of Jews in Poland. Students get to know the history of their town, often discovering blank spots on the map of knowledge of the no longer existing Jewish community. One such community I hope to be the shtetl where my grandmother and mother were born and home of the Hasidic Jewish community from which my mother's family comes, Piszczach. The modern Jewish history of Piszczach, Poland, dates back to at least the 18th century, when the community came under the influence of one of the founders of Hasidic Judaism, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Morgenstern, the famous Kutzker Rabbi. This early master of the Hasidic movement is described by Abraham Joshua Heschel and Elie Wiesel, as a soul on fire with a burning passion for truth. The granddaughter of the Kutzker Rebbe, Glicka Morgenstern, came to live in Piszczach and with her came many of her grandfather's followers, making Piszczach a center of Hasidic Judaism. This church. On 16 miles southwest of Brest, 12 miles east southeast of Biela Podolska, and 61 miles northeast of the regional capital Lublin. In 1900, the Jewish population of Pischa was about 400. In 1909, of those living in the area surrounding the village, 40% were Jews. Today, there is no Jewish presence in Pischa and the population of the entire community is about 1,000. Jewish life? Jewish life in Pischah came to an abrupt end in August 1942. When we were in Pischah, a Mr. Kondrich saw us in the village square and came over to talk. He told us that his father remembered the Jewish community, and the day the Nazis marched the Jews of Pischah to the village of Lomaz, where he was told the Jews survived the war. However, we learned the truth of what happened in the book Ordinary Men, Reserve Police Battalion 101 and the Final Solution, by Christopher R. Browning, who describes the story how in 1942, a unit of ordinary middle-aged German reserve policemen were ordered to liquidate a Jewish village. Most of them had never fired a shot at a human being before, yet they killed with little hesitation and eventually went on to slaughter tens of thousands in cold blood. I will spare you the details of what happened, but the book specifically mentions the Jews of Pischah, the men, women, and children, who after they arrived in Lomaz were senselessly murdered in a march to death in the forest. 400 years of a Jewish culture, a community that was almost half Jewish, the seat of a Hasidic life rich in the lore of the Kutzka rabbinic dynasty from which our family descends, all gone. All destroyed by Hitler, making the world, as he would say, Judenrein. Blotting out from memory any trace of Jewish life and culture. Turning gravestones into paving stones. How could we not go back, discover and record for future generations what was once so much a vital part of our family's heritage? 
For unlike Brenda, we didn't have to run from the monster that devoured her Polish home, as Jack reminded me. When you're running from a deadly monster, it's probably best not to look back. We have the advantage of the monster now being dead for 65 years, and it isn't so difficult to go back and even poke sticks at it to learn all we can about it and what really happens there. To me, the village is not quite real. We were in Pisha, the sign on the square said so, yet this village, for me, was more of a kaleidoscope of multicolored stories of my mother. As a little girl, running and playing along the stream that ran through the town. Of her sitting quietly in a corner of the family store. Down the street from the square, much the way Mother remembers it, stands the Catholic Church. Relations with the local Poles were tolerable, however with very little if any social interaction. Only once a year was anti-Semitism raised to an intolerable level. Figureheads in the public square, mm -hmm. and they used to parade from one end of town to the other. And during that time, we were instructed not to leave our homes because they were afraid that it might arouse antagonism towards the Jews who were Christ killers. Just past the church is the stream that runs through the village. Here is the place Mom would tell of the Tashlik ceremony, when on Rosh Hashanah the men would gather to symbolically drop their sins in the form of breadcrumbs into the water. The synagogue in Pischach no longer exists, but the area of the Jewish cemetery is easily found. A decaying fence surrounds the grounds there are no more gravestones having been removed by the Nazis for one of their pavement projects. Only an overgrown field of grass, a few trees, and one birch tree stands witness to this sacred ground. Here lies all that's left of a vibrant Jewish community, a song of life that once echoed across the Polish landscape.